Good morning. This is Daily Hebrew Declarations with Daniel Jedediah Cook, and I'm reading the declaration for today, January the 20th, 2021. The three Hebrew letters we're honoring today are Mem, Resh, and Shin. Along with those three living letters, we're also honoring the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of might. The declaration today reads this, Water, vibrating like frequency, going along with the spirit of wisdom and looking into the depths of the Father Yahweh. With a renewed, humbled mind, united with the Holy Ghost, we have full access to Yahweh's divine secrets and mysteries. As we hear the word of Yahweh in our face-to-face, we allow that word to change us and to become more like Him. Today's declaration is a stand on the very heart of what I know that Yahweh has been been speaking over the last little bit. Today is a very important day in the in the nation. We've got a lot of things going on, and there is just some awesomeness as the sons of God are arising and taking their place. You see, I don't the one thing that I know that that I believe that Yahweh has called us to do in this place that He has given us this ministry is the place of of encouraging one another and saying, hey, let us rise up to see who we are in Him. These things have always been there. These things have always been uh, available for us to be able to stand and to operate and to walk in. I want to thank Apostle Aaron Smith for uh, the, the, the love and the correction and the time that he's taken with us over the past 17 years and helped us to learn. I want to thank you, Father, Father Yahweh, for allowing the Holy Ghost to help to mold and to shape us in the midst of that. Uh, Thank you, Father, for for the the place that that you have given us and that you are allowing us to see that we have a confidence in you that goes beyond. We have a confidence in you that really goes beyond anything that the world has in its place because we are standing in you. We are standing and being a part of you and through you and from you. John 17, that I am in you and you are in me. The two coming together as one and us operating together as one. Just as the as the frequency vibrates the water, your frequency vibrates the waters inside of me. Your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of understanding, counsel, might, knowledge and fear of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord yourself how you help to teach us and you show us the paths that we need to take. But how do we apply this into our lives? How do we take that and then and then begin to use that in what we know that Yahweh has called us? Well, it really requires that renewed, humbled mind, united with Holy Ghost, where we have full access to the divine secrets that Yahweh has hidden away just for his sons. You see, I know that Yahweh showed me quite some time ago with Moshe, as well as others. Look at Enoch, look at Moshe, look at others who Yahweh has has allowed to see into the depths. Let's go back to Enoch, because Enoch walked with Yahweh and was no more. Now, if you go in and you read the book of Enoch, you begin to discover that Enoch actually spent more and more and more time with Yahweh. You discover that that in the beginning, when he first began to, to tell others about what he was seeing and hearing. His wisdom was was unknown in that world at that time because he had been spending time with the Father and then telling those people what the Father was saying. And, and they were able to take that word and use that word and to, and to prosper and to grow because of that. And then he would take more and more time. At first, it was he would only talk to the people maybe once a month. Then it became once a year. Then it became quite lengthy periods of time where his time was spent with Yahweh. But the time that he did get a chance to speak to the princes and those who would hear, also, they, they began to, to compact, if you will. The wisdom was able to be, to be given in a, in a shorter period of time and understood. Because, well, I say understood, understood at least to the point of beginning to use it. And that's the beginning of wisdom. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But we know that in that place of the fear of the Lord, that fear of the Lord is that, that part of us that, that realizes we, we do have a renewed, humbled mind. 
And we know that Yahweh gives us these things, gives us these opportunities, and gives us these places to go and to be and to do. And he takes care of every part of that. As we begin to really change our world by what we see, as we begin to look into the face of the Father and see what he's saying and become a a receptacle, become, if you will, a portal, become a place where Yahweh's glory can come and sit. That's why I've talked so much here lately about the candle, because the candle is such a beautiful expression of just that. And the fire of Almighty Yahweh sitting on the very top of that candle, the wick itself being the connection to the earth, the connection to allow the fuel of what goes on in the earth to fuel the very glory of Yahweh as that candle is, is being seen. But yet the fire itself isn't a part of the world. It isn't, it's only attached in that its fuel is connected in with that, that, that candle wick. But the fire itself is always in an ever-increasing way going up to Yahweh, looking to the face of the Father. And in that place, with the fuel of the, of the situations of the world, are able to shine the, the Shekinah glory, the beautiful, bright, brilliance glory of, of Yahweh in the earth. You see, that's who we are. We are his fire. We are the fire of Almighty Yahweh on the earth. You know, I've said this not too terribly long ago when I talked about, you know, we, we, we look at Revelations, we talk about how Revelations talks about being the earth being renewed by fire. Well, who says that we aren't that fire? And the way it's being renewed is, the, is really the words of our mouth, the, 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 the speech of our mouth. You know, there's a, there's a scripture in uh, Psalms that talks about the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And when you, when you look at that, when you, especially when you do tra- start to try to, uh, to break it down a little bit, you discover that the, the, the sinner there is really one who has heard the word of Yahweh and then chosen not to do something about it. So I'm not going to get into the details of sin. That's between you and Holy Ghost and you and Almighty Yahweh. You deal with him on those, on those questions of sin. But in this, in this particular scripture, it's one who literally just chooses not to follow what, the Yahweh, what Yahweh has said, not, who chooses not to do something about what Yahweh has said. So the wealth of the sinner, the wealth of the one, let me change that a little bit. The wealth of the one who chooses not to do something or chooses not to use what Yahweh has already given him is laid up for the righteous. Now, that word laid up there is the Hebrew word zaphon. And zaphon is a beautiful word because it, it begins to speak about the zadi, the, the, the place of righteousness, the, the one who stands in righteousness. But see, it's even deeper than that because uh, zadi can also be seen as a hunter. And, and as a hunter, you know, it's one who goes out and looks, one who goes out to try to discover something. And in that place of discovery, he begins to find the treasure. Now, in the case of a hunter, that may be a doe, or that may be a deer, or that may be uh, whatever they're, they're hunting for, if they're hunting in the place for food. Or it may be that their hunt, the hunter is one who is out hunting treasure, the Zadokim Nisterim, which are the, uh, really the treasure hunters. That's my term for treasure hunters in Scripture. They're the ones that are going out. So Zadi also talks about the place of a journey. And I know Zadi wasn't one of the letters that we're talking about today, but I know that Yahweh is speaking about this place of the treasure and who we are. Because why? We have full access to Yahweh's divine secrets in mysteries. Moshe, you know, Moshe had a testimony that he walked with Yahweh. And matter of fact, they talked as one friend talks to another. There were no riddles. There were no mysteries. There were no secrets between the two of them. No, there was the fullness of the understanding because, because uh, Yahweh was giving Moshe and he was then being able to apply on the earth what he was seeing from that of Yahweh. Now, there may have been a, a growing in that. You know, there was a fullness of understanding but the, and there was a fullness of, of realizing what Yahweh was giving, but there, there was a walking out and a maturing of that treasure and of that understanding, but yet at the same time, there was an understanding. Well, there are no mysteries, riddles, or secrets in Yahweh, not to a son. 
You see, it's in that face-to-face that the word begins to change us and we become more like him. So let's stand knowing that Yahweh has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And we stand and becoming more like you in the earth. We stand and are the receptacle of your glory here on the earth.